This story starts here in Ensenada, Baja, California. Like most stories in Mexico, this one starts with a friend of a friend offering to help. The thing you need to know about this part of the world is that they are off-road rally racing fanatics. And when I say fanatics, I mean they live, eat and breathe off-road racing. Somehow, the very shop that I ended up moving my solar-powered van into for the repairs happens to be the most badass race prep shop in all of Baja, California. ORS Race Prep. These guys are a big fucking deal. Obviously, it's not all prep. ORS loves to race the vehicles they build, and the shop's owner, and now my close friend Hector Maimez, invited me to see what it's all about. There was a race in a town called San Felipe, which is to the east of Ensenada. And this is a story about how I joined an off-road race team and got stuck in the desert for 24 hours. Now, I have no idea about the racing world. Other than playfully dabbling in motorsports of the two-wheel kind, I couldn't tell you the first thing about race cars. So given this, obviously, I said it'd be rude not to, and just like when I was in Alaska with the semi-automatic guns, now in Baja, I should behave accordingly. So I got my culo huero in the ute and went racing. It was a Friday night and the very first thing we had to do is to prep the race car. Roll race prep montage in three, two, one. We're in El Felipe. In the Crazy Bulls Mocho, which Hector just built. We're taking it for a test drive and hopefully this is the winning truck for tomorrow. Yeah. I know this may look like just a VW bug, but I'll have you know that Class 11 is a big deal here in Baja, California. It has been referred to as the heart and soul of off-road racing. A little background about the classes of race cars in the off-road world is that Class 1s or trophy trucks, well, let's just say they make the track look easy. In Class 11s, well, you better have a strong stomach for this kind of race car, because the race is more of a war than it is a smooth ride. The next day at sunrise, race day starts. We line up at the starting line and away we go. Race starts without a hitch. The plan is to navigate the extreme conditions offered up by this year's Score Baja 500. It's 500 miles of dry, grueling, sandy conditions. Mountains, dust and 45 degree heat. There are three major checkpoints which will become more important later on in the story. But for now, all I know is that there are about 20 pit stop opportunities of which about 10 of them will be used as driver changes or general vehicle checkups. About 5 of them are ones that we'll be attending to offer our support. First two pit stops go off without a hitch. A basic drive by was all that was needed. I missed the first drive by because, well, nature called and when you gotta go, you gotta go. Second drive by was at about mile 40. Same thing, just a simple drive by. Although we were in second position, so I wasn't too happy about that. I was ensured that it was early on in the race, and about five minutes later we heard over the two-way that we had taken the lead and that we were pulling ahead of the pack. At pit three, I took the liberty of filming the whole process. It was around mile 80 where the first full pit and driver change happened. I'll play the whole 20 minute pit here in about 20 seconds so you get the idea of what's going on.
So the day seems like it's going on and on and on. Other than a few minor issues, the car is performing absolutely perfectly. The sun sets and we have what we think is our final major pit before the finish line. It is promising to know that at 11 p.m. at night, there are much more capable class trucks stuck in the pits with serious issues. This was turning out to be one hell of a race. We were past the second out of the three checkpoints and on time to make the third so we could qualify to finish the race. Hector and I decided to turn up the level of support. We agreed to chase the Crazy Fools racing team for the remainder of the race in a razor. Things were about to get interesting. We were chasing the guys for hours and hours up berms, whoops and steep hill climbs. The Bocho, aka the VW Bug Class 11 race car was holding on really well. Until we got a flat tire that is. As we got back on the road we chased and chased some more until something more sinister occurred. One of the suspension mounts gave way and we found ourselves in need of a major repair. It was 3am and we only had a couple of hours to complete the remainder of the last 100 or so miles of the course before the race was officially called. We were the only class 11 left and as a matter of fact the only race car left on the course. A finish would equal to a first place for the crazy fools team so there was a lot on the line. Finally, we were back on the road chasing and assisting the boys through the toughest part of the course. Mountain passes, deep boggy sand, and at one point we were pulling them out of silt bogs every five miles or so. But nonetheless, we persevered. That was, of course, until the next complication. Our Razor's transmission blew up and the guys were left on their own in the desert with no support vehicle. By the grace of the racing gods, there was only one obstacle they had to get past to get out of the desert and to the finish line. If they could achieve this, they would get their big W on the scorecard. Meanwhile, Hector and I were stuck in the middle of the desert with no water, no food and no sign of rescue. It was apparent that we had to bunker down for the night and listen on the radio for the news of our team crossing the finish line. The thing is that we thought we were coming for a bar 500, but I think it was 1,000. We got duped. We waited for what seemed like an eternity, with no news, until finally just 10 miles from the finish line, and just before sunrise, we heard news over the two-way. The guys had rolled the Class 11 bot jaw. The vehicle had completed a full rollover, and then another half roll to end up on its side. Luckily, there were no injuries. Despite the seriousness of a crash like this, the vehicle was fine. A perfect example of what a well-prepped race car can handle. Knowing full well that there was no way we were going to make it across the finish line for the 6am deadline, the whole team was devastated. We'd fought so hard to get to where we were. But in full Baja off-road race style, the driver and co-driver flipped the car back on all four wheels drove the final 10 miles to cross the line and finish the race anyway. With the car successfully across the finish line, everybody was ready for some much needed rest. Although it did seem like they'd forgotten a minor detail. Hector and I, who were still in the desert trying to get as much rest as we could while the sun was rising and the temperature along with it. Hector and I finally got out at around 11am and it felt like we'd gone through a war. A shower and a nap were welcomed before hitting the road back to Ensenada to sleep in our own non-desert race car beds for the first time in days. The final result for the Crazy Fools racing team was a big fat DNF. The magazine issue for the Baja 500 event stated that this year was one of the toughest ever. In that same magazine, score also failed to even mention the battle that the infamous 1108 Class 11 Vauxhall went through. It begs the question, have they forgotten the heart and soul of what racing is built on in Baja, California? But maybe that's just a perspective of one outsider who got to experience firsthand what a world-class off-road race is like in Baja, California. Am I gonna chase a race car all night through the desert again? Who knows, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But next year, maybe you'll see me strapped into the driver's seat of an all-electric Class 11 VW Bug.